911, please help. I'm in the desert and a rattlesnake just bit me. 104, 104, we have a man stranded in the desert. Sir, stay where you are. We are on the way. 104, we've got him. Oh my god. Uh, is everything good out there? Ten four. Um, you guys like secured the passenger, right? Oh my god, it's closed. Uh, hey Siri, call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No, 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 no. Um, I said cancel. Would you like to cancel? Yes. Yes. Canceling your passport and birth certificate. What? No. How did you have permission to do that? Permission to leak your feed pics. My feeds. What? Sending feed pics to everyone in your contacts. Yeah. How are you even doing this? This is illegal. Something illegal is happening. Alerting the FBI. Yeah, something illegal is happening. You just blew up that Wendy's. Okay, should I send this to the FBI? I just blew up a Wendy's. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Did you say absolutely? Message send. <laughs> Would you like to use your pics from the mugshot trend for when you go to prison? <laughs> no. Kidnap Queen Elizabeth? No, not Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> I had just finished doodling all over my arms for five hours straight while watching the Minions movie. But then my arms started to burn and I was like, it's fine, it's washable ink. So I quickly ran upstairs to my bathroom to wash it off and it was permanent. The ink was now fused to my skin and I could feel the doodles entering my bloodstream. But I got distracted and thought, doodle is such a funny sounding word. Like you can't say doodle angrily. <laughs> and then I realized my arms had fallen off. They were just on the floor staring back at me. How am I going to deal with the spider colony in my bathroom? I'm going to have to eat them to get rid of them. Actually, that wasn't too bad. It's a little bit crunchy and a little bit salty. How am I going to drive to top? Taco Bell now. How am I gonna shop for mayonnaise? How will I put on hand sanitizer? Wait, wait, I don't need hand sanitizer because I have no hands. I won't be catching no viruses. Hi, I'm Ben, and this is why you should chop off your arms. I was sucking grapes into my mouth as a snack when I realized these grapes haven't been washed yet. And you know what's on unwashed grapes? Chemicals and bugs. You know what gives Spider-Man his powers? A bug covered in chemicals. I suddenly felt nauseous and had to throw up, but I felt something. I shot a web out of my wrist and flushed the toilet. And that's when I realized I have powers. Think of all the things I can do now. I can free Joe Exotic. I can fling the girl who sings Dance Monkey into the orbit of the sun. I went to the grocery store and picked up more grapes to fuel my power. But there was an old grandpa who wasn't social distancing, so I used my web to yank his walker out of his hand. Good luck crawling within six feet of me. When I got home, I immediately inhaled the new batch of superbugs. I felt my power grow stronger. My veins were pumping blood and my heart rate was going the speed of light. But then I blacked out. I woke up from my coma three years later. The whole world was empty from the pandemic and I realized everyone I loved was gone. But then I thought, I can still shoot noodles from my wrist. I'm Spider-Man, baby. I was seeing how many oranges I could fit in my mouth before throwing up when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, and when I answered it, there was no one there, just a notebook. It was kind of <laughs> creepy, but when I opened it, I realized it was for my horse girl cousin Gretchen, and she'd drawn me, uh, Peppa Pig? I thought I'd draw her something back, so I made, um, two minions in love, and I left it in the same place for her. The next morning, the doorbell rang again, and I opened it to find another Peppa, so I took the liberty of drawing Rainy Rodriguez as my sleep paralysis demon, and put it back the same place as yesterday. Oh, However, the next day I received something completely different. When I opened the sketchbook, Peppa had turned into bacon? Is, is this a threat? I texted her, haha, very funny, Gretchen, stop coming to my house. And she was like, what? And so I replied, Peppa time is canceled, Gretchen. And she replied, I don't know what you're talking about. So, knowing that wasn't Gretchen the whole time, I felt completely terrified, so I watched some seafood ASMR eating and fell asleep. I woke up to my leg burning from my laptop. My hand kind of felt weird, and I noticed I was covered in bacon. Anyways, now I'm completely terrified, and I don't know what to draw in return. Please help. I was making some pink sauce and pickles pasta and wanted some seasoning as a finishing touch. But I accidentally grabbed a jar of catnip thinking it was oregano and, and didn't notice until I woke up from a nap to meowing outside my window. And when I opened the door, I saw 40 cats outside my house and I thought it was the greatest day of my life until I met this musty stray who smelled like Fritos and he showed me this really cool trick called bite. And I thought, well, now I have rabies. So I scrambled to find someone to pee on the wound to neutralize it. But after that didn't work, I realized that's what you do for a jellyfish thing and not rabies. So I went to the pharmacy to see if I could find some medication for the bite, but I'm in Japan, so I just translated some medications and found this one that Google Translate says was rabies control. So I took it, and after a couple hours, my stomach started growing, and I realized it was babies control. And I was like, oh my god, the birth control malfunction made me fucking pregnant? Nah, I'm not pregnant. I just gained 10 pounds, because... Have you ever noticed how almost every label has these weird dots and color codes? These are on everything from pudding boxes to taco seasoning packets. They're on granola bar boxes, and they're even on chocolate chip bags. Even my delicious cottage cheese has it too. I thought to myself, what do they mean? So I've spent the past month researching it, trying to crack the code. My first thoughts were that it had to do with the color. So I wrote down two codes from two packages down. But then my marker died, so I killed it.
Then I colored in the shapes to match the secret code, but I didn't find anything, so I ripped it up. That's when I realized it's not a color puzzle, it's a crossword puzzle. The code always appears in either four or six circles or squares. So I wrote it out again and I knew exactly what filled the spaces this time. Debbie Ryan. If you don't believe me, here is her with pistachio pudding has the code. Here's chocolate chip cookies on her snap story. Chocolate chips have the code. And finally, here's her with a granola bar. The granola bar has the code. Why would she do this? What if she's trying to brainwash all of us by placing these subtle codes so she can take over our brains and- uh, ah! So people used to say I look a lot like Noah Centineo, but then he grew a beard and bleached it, and now if you ever say I look like him, I will cry. But then I thought, I have a prime opportunity to impersonate him. <laughs> now I can't grow a blonde beard in 10 seconds, but I know someone that has what I need. I grabbed my dog Kobe and cut off a little bit of her hair and taped it to my cheeks. It felt a little bit uncomfy because she's fleas and they got mad and started biting me, but whatever. I looked in the mirror and thought, oh my god, I'm Noah Centineo. Now I just need to post from his Instagram account and tell people to send me $3 million so I can buy 3 million refrigerators and leave them open and stop climate change. I was logging into his account, but I didn't know his password. First, I tried one, two, three, four, and what? What the? It worked! Just as I was about to make the post, I got a call from the FBI. They said, you've been caught hacking. We're gonna drop a nuke on your house. I screamed, ah! And I grabbed everything I love and got in my car and drove as fast as I could. But as I was driving, I was like, wow, these clouds are so beautiful. It looks it looks so peaceful out. Oh, I'm about to drive off the road. Uh, uh, ah! So I was using the gibberish filter when something really weird happened. Okay, uh, here we go. I am men yo house uh, ben of thou week. <laughs> what does that mean? And I was like, that's a little bit weird. And then my power went out. I was sitting in complete darkness except for a line of text that lit up on my computer that said, I'm right in, in front of you. I thought, Am I being hacked? So I grabbed my phone and opened up Wattpad and deleted all my Harry Styles fanfics I've been writing since I was in middle school. But then the hacker said, I, I think I love you. So I told him, I don't think it's gonna work out. And the hacker replied, If I can't have you, the world can have this. And he had leaked all of my Harry Styles fanfics from when I was 12. Harry Styles grabs your neck and whispers in your ear. I have one direction, but without the D in direction, if you know what I mean. All right, sir. The man that robbed you, what color were his eyes? His eyes were hazel. And what about accessories? What was he wearing? Did he have glasses, a hat? He had glasses on. He had these square glasses. All right, son. Take a look at the screen. Was this the man that robbed you? So I was on the phone with 911 because I had made some banana soup with a hint of ranch dressing and I'd left the gas burner on and I was scared my house would blow up. So I said, please help. And the operator was like, it's going to be okay. We're on our way. And me being so starved for human interaction replied, okay, <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs> and I began to prepare for my date with the emergency services person. I dimmed the lights to set the mood. And then I set the table and put out the banana soup I'd cooked earlier and poured some fancy juice de orange. I changed out of my depression fit into something slightly less depressing and attempted to fix my hair but i ended up wanting to cut it all off and had a mental breakdown but i was like mm, another day <laughs> suddenly i heard the doorbell ring i got up and ran over to let them in but i was so excited that i didn't see the charger on the floor i forgot there was gas in my house and i tripped over it and it created a spark and next thing you know um Hey y'all, I'm currently in the vegan teacher's basement, so I thought I'd give you a house tour. Here's a dining room table. It has don't eat cats painted on it. Um, just a reminder if you're gonna do that today. Here are two fly swatters, which um, I don't know if you can have that as a vegan, but whatever. Upstairs is the studio. Uh, that's her exercise bike. She also streams here by putting her phone on a tripod, which is a wooden block from Home Depot with three nails in it. And this is her schedule, which starts at five in the morning to wake up and eat blueberries and chia seeds. Anyways, kitchen tour. This is me, by the way. This horse, um, the horse's name was Ben. Doesn't mean I want to ride you, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> her fridge has like 4,000 uh, vegetables and a uh, a pepperoni stick, which is really interesting. Um, don't ask any questions about it, otherwise- Actually, stop filming for a second. Okay. Anyways, welcome to the backyard. Here's some uh, propaganda and military-grade security systems that fire tactical rounds if it sees you eating meat. And that's the tour of the happy vegan home that I'm so happy to be in the basement of. <laughs> Today I spent nine hours painting Doja Cat, and it turned out so good that I decided to DM it to her. And she actually replied by saying, it's terrific. And I was just in disbelief that she replied, so I screenshotted it as fast as I could and posted it on my story to show all my friends. But after she saw it, she DM'd me a picture of the front of my house and my birth certificate. And when I said, yeah, yes it is, Doja Cat, <laughs> I saw she mentioned me in her story. And when I looked, she had posted both of those images on her story. And I was like, Doja, why would you do that? And then she went live and was very angry at me. And the next 
thing I knew, there were people banging on my front door, and then one of them threw something through my window, and I had no clue what it is, so I slowly approached it, but when I got too close, it started to fill my room with gas, and I heard on her live stream, and she said, Careful of the tear gas, the tear gas. So I grabbed what I could and ran out of my house and saw a flyer on the telephone pole for witness protection. And I called them and had to throw away my passport and credit cards. And now I'm flying to New Zealand to start a new life. Thanks, Doja Cat. I was scrolling through Tinder because the last person I met was when I was at the Apple store and came across some girl's number that she left on an iPad. So I took it and went home and tried texting it and just said hi. And then she replied asking if she could come over for some eggplant. And I panicked because I've never cooked eggplant before. But I remembered I could make eggplant parmesan. So I was looking for recipes on Google when I realized I accidentally typed in eggplant permission. Anyways, she said she was 30 minutes away and I ended up running to the grocery store to buy some eggplant. So I grabbed some eggplants and then I needed the parmesan. So I went up to this giant wheel of parmesan they had but i couldn't lift it so i just got a little piece anyways i went home and chopped up the eggplant and dropped some on the ground but i used the five minute rule because i'm half white and i put it in the pan and then i added some cheese and was gonna bake it when i found a spider in my oven so i baked that instead until he was nice and crispy and then i threw the eggplant in and it was finally ready so i sent her a picture of the eggplant parmesan and said you ready for this eggplant but then all of a sudden my texts to her were green and i heard tires screeching outside anyways now i'm back on tinder so if anyone wants a serving of eggplant parmesan make sure you match with me I was scrolling through the deep web when I saw an ad for a GoFundMe to get the queen an air fryer before she dies. So I went to it and saw no one had donated. So I gave her $5 and went to bed. But when I woke up the next morning, I got an email that it was shut down by GoFundMe. And I knew the queen still needs an air fryer. So I packed my bags and went to the airport to book the next flight to London to bring her an air fryer that I bought for her. And after 10 hours, I landed and Ben was in the Big Ben. So I took the train to the Buckingham Palace where she lives. But when I got there, they had it gated off and I couldn't go in to see the queen so i found another entrance with a flimsy little fence that i slid under and then i popped over another fence but that triggered an alarm so i was running as fast as i could and i happened to drop the air fryer but i had to hide so i managed to find the queen's quarters and snuck in and i thought i was safe until <laughs> I woke up on some cliffs, on an island with nothing but a note on my arm that said Please, they won't let me air fry Elizabeth, I will save you Today I made a New Year's resolution to stop filling up my gas car with diesel just because it's cheaper. Because last time I did that, it started smoking when I was driving back from the gas station and then eventually burst into flames. So I've actually failed my first New Year's resolution because now I have no car to fill up with gas and it's 40 grand to repair the garage from fire damage. But I can't go to the bank because I don't have a car. So I walked in minus 40 degree weather to the car store and bought an electric car with all the money I made selling human organs off the black market. And it's really cute and it looks like a ladybug and I drove it home and found out I can plug it in with the same charger as my phone. So I grabbed my dog and we went on a little mini road trip for about 47 minutes when my car died because apparently you can't charge a car with a phone charger. So now I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere, genuinely considering eating my cheese that I brought as a snack while I wait for the tow truck to come, obviously. So I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic. Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic. Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. And was making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because I filled the whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying to die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face I got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth it. Hiya, here's your food. Thanks, dude. Um, you didn't take- Oh, uh, I only have two dollars. Oh, you know what I have? Your address. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um... Yeah, I can literally, like, take you out. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, does your family live here? Uh, yeah. Uh, why? Oh, sweet. Uh, my uncle actually eats families. <laughs> oh! Um... <laughs> Crap! What, uh, what kind of sauce do you want? Oh, I didn't order any sauce. <laughs> okay, well, will barbecue work when my uncle eats your family? <laughs> Oh, dude, I think you have a gas leak in your house. Wait, like, for real? Yeah, can I go check it out for you? Oh, right, yeah, for sure, come on in. Okay, sick! Okay, so, uh, the kitchen's right here if you want to check it there. Hmm. Well, like, are you able to find it? Oh, I know exactly where it is. <coughs> hey, I ordered vegan taquitos. Is there cheese in this? Why, yes, there is. 
<laughs> um, I'm lactose intolerant. And you're the gas leak. <laughs> I was really bored, so I tried to buy the most expensive thing on Gucci's website for funsies. But that's when I remembered, Ben, you can't afford Taco Bell. So I was typing random numbers, hoping one was an actual credit card number, and nothing was working. I was like, well, there goes my well alpaca cardigan. Finally, I tried 69, 69, 69, 69. Expiration date, April 20th, AK420. <laughs> and security code 666. And I hit enter. I was like, oh, well, that was fun. So I closed my laptop, but then I got an email. Hey, my order had shipped. And then suddenly I heard a knock at the door and I was like, oh, I didn't know what I just did. So I checked my doorbell cam and there was a stranger there. Then I heard the door open and then there were footsteps coming towards me and then falling. Uh, and then the intruder got up and said, this is the FBI. We've got you. And I was like, you've got me. You think you've been watching me for the past month? I've had my FBI agent's laptop bugged. Every time he logs in to watch me, I've been watching him. In fact, I ordered this exact item knowing it would bring him here. He ran back to his HQ to open up his laptop and in disbelief, there I was fully in control of the FBI system. Checkmate. I really needed a girlfriend to quarantine with, so I decided to abduct a live cockroach from the Burger King parking lot. Meet Sally. She's my bae, and we were so in love. I took her on dates to the park, and we would go skateboarding together. Life was absolutely beautiful when I was around here. She never ever bugged me. <laughs> So on one sunny day, I decided to ask for Sally's hand in marriage. But as I got down on one knee and said, will you marry me? She remembered a few weeks ago when she caught me cheating with Gilberto the fly. Me and Gilberto did indeed have a fling, but I swore it was nothing. We, we were just friends. It, it was just one date. But Sally couldn't take it and rejected my proposal. I was destroyed and I thought, if, if I can't have you, no one can. I took on my magnifying glass and made a laser beam with the sun's ray. I thought it was goodbye, Sally, as she caught fire. But frick, I'm out of time. Uh, full videos in my bio. I was buying some pot, some green, if you know what I mean. I wanted a green pot because I have a plant that lives in a Ziploc, but I came across this perfect pot at the thrift shop, except it had the name Patricia on it. And I thought, oh, a pot named Patricia. It must be empty, right? Not. After I bought the pot and walked off the block, I saw Patricia was still in the pot that I had bought and realized it wasn't a pot, but an urn. When Patricia died, she was burned and then put in this urn and then got donated at this Goodwill location in Woodburn. But she was worth more than the $5 bill that I paid with at the till. I took her home and looked her up and saw she came from Brazil and worked at a bar called the Sawmill in Jacksonville. And on her profile was this beautiful hill. And it might be overkill, but I thought Patricia should rest there and not in the potting section at a Goodwill. So I picked her up, plopped her on my bike's sill, and rode my bike to the base of a hill and then pedaled to the very damn top of that hill where I would spread her ashes with all of my will. And Patricia took a little bit of a spill. Remember on New Year's Eve when we were all excited for 2020 to start? And then World War II almost started? And we were like, okay, that's the worst thing that's gonna happen this year. And then Australia walked in and said, you know what? I am gonna light on fire. And then immediately after that, we lost Kobe. And we're like, okay, that's enough for this year. But it wasn't because then someone coughed. And the next thing you know, six million people were coughing. And then anything that ever brought anyone joy was canceled. And then after that, we're like, okay, this is too much. I would like to go to bed for the rest of the year. And then boom, murder hornets arrive in North America. Oh, what's that? That's just NASA discovering alternate universes that apparently exist now. And that thing in the sky? Oh yeah, that's an asteroid that almost wiped out humanity. Which at this point wouldn't be a bad thing. Oh yeah, the government also confirmed that they found UFOs, you know, as a little treat. And the year isn't even done yet. It's literally June. Like, what's gonna happen now? <laughs> if you want to see my accurate prediction of what's gonna happen the rest of the year, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I was enjoying some fresh strawberries when my doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting anyone, but I went and answered the door anyways. No one was there, but whoever rang the doorbell had left an egg? It was covered in blue speckles and it was warm? But I decided right then and there, I'm gonna care for this egg until it hatches and be a bird dad. I made a little house for it by grabbing a box and putting grass in it. Then I set up a heat lamp so the egg root would be nice and toasty. But I was getting bored of waiting for him to hatch, so I decided to take him on a walk. Well, it was more of a roll. I taught Eggbert how to skate and showed him to my dog, but then she tried to eat him. And I was like, after a week, my son started to get an attitude. He would just roll away from me when I was talking to him and then go play Fortnite all day. But then one day we started arguing because the place was a chicken coop. And I got so mad, I stormed off. I started to feel bad, so I went to go say sorry, but he was gone. I ran outside, and I looked everywhere for him. I checked the patio, I went and looked in the garden. I was starting to freak out when... <laughs> Egbert? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what was that? What what are you doing? Oh, uh, I don't know. I just thought it'd be kind of cool, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, don't do that. That's really freaking weird. I, I'm sorry. I, I just thought, like... I don't know why, like, out of all things you could do, you do that. Like, what is that? Okay, I just, I just wanted to show I liked it. Okay. What? By hitting yourself? This is the stupidest thing ever. Okay, I'm sorry. Next time I'll just throw my poop like usual when I'm excited. Wait, hold on one second. 
All right, peace. Uh, that was my wife. And she was wondering if you wanted to eat some dinosaur tonight. Oh, word? All right, let's go. I was about to taste test my dog's treats when I got a really weird DM. I picked up my phone to see that it was from Selena Gomez. She asked me, can I come to your house right now? Well, it looks like I'm keeping my eye out for Selena. I was getting ready for our date when the news turned off. Breaking news, Selena Gomez has gone off the rails and is robbing random people. Selena. Nicki Minaj wasn't joking. I followed Nicki's advice and I grabbed a spoon and I put it to my eye and I kept an eye out for Selena. But then she had DM'd me again. This time she said, I'm outside. Oh no. When Selena Gomez has gone crazy, scoop out your eyeballs so that she won't burn your house down, kidnap your whole family. No, please. Everything is not what it seems She's at my door trying to get in I will call the police I think I'm in trouble Finna hide in the trees Because everything is not What it seems me and my 80 year old neighbor Myrtle have been leaving each other messages through our windows to stay entertained during quarantine. That's until yesterday when she wrote a very threatening sign. I know she's an old lady, but that made my anxiety go ding 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 ding. When I went downstairs, the door was open, like she said, and there was a box. But then my ADHD distracted me and I started thinking, why did Marty Rich name a song The Box? Is he like just rapping about a box? Did he order a Snap out of it, Ben. You potentially have an elderly intruder in your house. She could like bite me with her dentures or something and give me corona. I took the box and screamed, Leave me alone, Myrtle! And then went to go make my final. Final sign. I placed it in my window where I knew she would see it. Here's a fun Ben fact. I'm an expert in archery and I'm not afraid to turn her into Myrtle on a stick. I felt prepared, but all I could do now was wait around for Myrtle to make her move. But I got curious and decided to check out the box. It could have been booby trapped. Ha, <laughs> booby. For all I know, but I opened it anyways and... It turns out it was cookies. She baked me cookies. So I think I have a stalker and it's starting to freak me out. It started a month ago when I'd accidentally showed my address on my story. I deleted it immediately, but a few days later, my doorbell rang in the middle of the night. Then a week later, I found a Nintendo DS outside my house that said, hello, Benjamin. And then a week after that, I found one inside my bathroom while I was showering. And it said, see you soon. But first of all, I don't even know where he's getting all these Nintendo DSs from. Like, they don't even make those mama jamas anymore. Personally, if I was invading someone's privacy, I'd use sticky notes or something. Anyways, I decided to change my front door code to a really secret number one two three four but then the next day i heard the door unlock and then someone came downstairs and they were in a black hoodie and black jeans and i thought they were gonna kidnap me but i welcome the stalker i haven't had a human interested in me in months so i asked them to come cuddle with me but they looked so caught off guard when i asked them to come under the blankets and then i guess i out creeped the creep when i tried to lick his toes and that's when he ran away my stalker doesn't even want me bruh so i was pre-rinsing my dishes in some nasty swamp water when my worst nightmare happened a piece of soggy mushy dishwater soaked food touched my finger i screamed and i flung it on the counter and i thought there must be a less painful way to make sure my dishes are clean and then all of a sudden the food said hey, listen. and rolled over to some finished quantum ultimate tabs for my dishwasher i don't know why people don't use their dishwasher and prefer to rinse dishes with their hands do you enjoy having your hands in food soup anyways i popped the tab in and started it when the food told me that pre-rinsing wastes up to 75 liters of water per load so from now on i will be skipping the rinse because the finished quantum ultimate tabs have enough power to destroy the dried on food stuck on the plate and there will be up to 75 liters of water saved with all my saved time and water i went outside to explore nature because for every purchase of finnish quantum ultimate finnish canada will donate one dollar to the nature conservancy of canada up to twenty five thousand dollars because canada has 20 percent of the world's fresh water and we need to protect it starting with small changes like using finnish quantum ultimate and skipping the pre-rinse I was about to play Subway Surfers while enjoying a banana. But then, someone commented this. So, I took an Uber in the middle of the night all the way over to the Netflix headquarters. And when I got there, I hopped the security fence and snuck into the building. Until I was stopped dead in my tracks by a security guard. I started freaking out. But then, I messed up my hair and face and made myself look like my twin nose at Deneo. All of a sudden, the guard was starstruck and he asked for my autograph. So, I signed it as no, uh, centimeter? And then he let me in. I was sneaking through the garage like a freaking FBI agent. When I passed the mainframe computer that stores every Netflix show ever. But I had to make a decision. Would I walk into the studio where they were filming the kissing booth number 9,342 or save the world by deleting the movie Despicable Me from existence entirely? I guess I had accidentally alerted the guards because they were chasing me, so I had to make a decision quick. So I gave up my dreams of having a Netflix original series and deleted Despicable Me from existence forever! Dun-dun! <laughs> 
I was at Staples because I needed some staples so I could staple a staple into my staple box so staples wouldn't fall out anymore. But staples was sold out of all the staples and I asked a staples employee named April if they had any more staples and she said that I could order some more staples from Naples. But this staples had no staples so I was gonna leave with no staples but my phone was dying so I needed a cable so I walked past April and went to the cables but the cables were too much so I just bought a bagel and now I'm at home at my table with my bagels and no staples or cables because April from staples wanted me to choke and as I bit my bagel it had mold and the bagel was fatal and I fell off the table and my last thoughts were my lover named Mabel when we would sit by the stables and pour Mabel all over our bagels and as I took my last breath on the floor I saw a staple I was cleaning my room today when I found out that I just hit 10 million followers and to celebrate I wanted to give each and every one of you one dollar now I don't have 10 million dollars but you know who does the bank so I went over there and had the idea to R to the O to the B it but quickly realized that I get too anxious simply going to Starbucks and ordering for myself without nearly peeing my pants so walking into a bank to commit a crime is kind of out of the question so my second idea was to make an Ed Sheeran disguise that is so convincing it looks like a deep fake so I taped it to my face and I used this simple hack that works on any ATM machines where you can type in the number of the address where the ATM is, like 900 for example, and then it'll think it's undergoing maintenance and spread out all its cash. So I tried it and boom, I suddenly had $20,000. And I stopped at each and every ATM, punching the code, getting racks when I remembered they have security cameras and even though I was disguised as Ed Sheeran, I wanted to be safe. So I gently disconnected the camera from the ATM and put it on the ground. And for the rest of the night, I'd never felt more alive, single-handedly taking down the greedy banks to steal from customers every single day. I was calculated, unstoppable. And I did it all right under the police's noses. It became addicting. Every single ATM was like a new hit. And the money, oh, it was endless. Ed Sheeran had to go on live TV to say he wasn't the thief. And I had gotten away with it. Oh, wait, just kidding. They actually got me. Well, at least I still have money for bail. And I still have 10 million of you guys. Uh, wait, um... I was walking to the store when I passed a window with a really cool design in it. And I searched up what that design is, and it's something called boulette holes. Anyways, I made it to 7-Eleven, and someone was stealing. Hello? But anyways, I was about to buy eight bottles of five-hour energy so I can stay up for a week straight. When I reached into my pocket and my wallet was gone, I told the clerk I couldn't pay and then I panicked and I left. And I was like, where's my wallet? I must have dropped it while I was walking here or something. And that's when I got a notification from my bank saying that someone was making purchases on my card. I ran home to see what they were buying and I opened my laptop and I saw that they had bought 27 boats. And I felt so impressed. I'm Special Agent Ben Dealmaida and welcome back to Catching a Thief. The night before, I placed the wallet right in the view of a camera I had set up. And I followed the thief home using a Bluetooth chip hidden in the wallet. And as I approached the house, I got ready with my flashlight to bust in there. But that's when I got tackled and put in handcuffs. I looked up and the thief turned out to be a different FBI agent. Hello, my name is Den Bielmeta and this is catching an FBI agent catching the thief. This right here is my birth certificate. Yup, I left my birth certificate in my pocket and it went through the washing machine. I found it while doing laundry and it was shriveled up like a little pecan. So the first thing I did besides completely panic was I tried put it in the oven to get the water out. But then my whole house filled with smoke and now it's a burnt little turd nugget. Now everyone loses things, things happen. I've washed my passport before, I've lost my wallet. I've microwaved my own credit card to see if it would turn into a potato chip, it did. My grandpa lost me in a parking lot when I was 10 and a strange man tried to abduct me and sell me for two goats on the black market in Zimbabwe, it's whatever. But what do you do when you literally destroy your birth certificate? Am I supposed to crawl right back into the womb and pop out and be like, wah, wah. Give me a birth certificate now. If you Google how to get another birth certificate, it just says you were the world's biggest idiot. So I've decided I have to make a new identity. I try to think of it less as illegally photoshopping a birth certificate and more like creating a new sim. I printed it off and I'm excited to share that I am now Aria Nagrande. I think it looks super professional and no one will think that it's fake. This is me buying a live crab from the store and freeing it into the ocean. The guy at the store was like, you know how to cook this, right? And I was like, oh, we are not cooking Mr. Krabs. As I was walking, some dude yelled at me and I got scared. And then this guy was walking around with an iguana. I'm like, it's my day to have an exotic pet, buddy. Look at his cute little mouth moving. Aww. I took him to the Santa Monica Pier before I freed him. And that's when I saw this guy literally kick a pigeon. I hate it here. Now, crabs can live 24 hours outside of water. But I thought, let's just free him already. Then some cops were staring at me and I got scared. I picked him up and I run to the beach. And I laid him down gently on the sand. He was barely moving. So I ran into the waves to try and get him in deeper so he could swim or something. But he took a bit of a tumble. So it wasn't looking good for Mr. Krabs. And I started crying. But then then he started moving again and I thought it's now or never. I scooped Mr. Krabs up and I ran over to that water and I dropped him in that water ever so gently. Oh crap, we are out of time. Um, if you want to see the rest of the video, uh, the link is in my bio. Today I looked in the mirror and thought, hmm, 
that's not me. That's a skinny little stick bug. I've had no motivation to go get up and make a proper meal for the past month and I look like a stick bug. I'll eat maybe one brownie that has no nutritional value and then go back to bed at 2 p.m. Or I'll eat four tortilla chips and then say, bon appetit, baby, dinner served. So I thought if there's ever been a time to get so many muscles, I look like a cumulonimbus cloud and drift off into the atmosphere, it's now. What I lacked was motivation. So to get a good jump start to my insane Dwayne The Rock Johnson workout routine, I went outside in freezing weather completely naked into the snow. In addition to giving myself hypothermia, my elderly neighbor Myrtle saw my lovely peaches and had a heart attack. To try and warm up before I literally die, I put my Crocs into sport mode and started running on the treadmill. And like, it wasn't that bad until I sneezed. I accidentally hit the 10 miles per hour button instead of the 2 miles per hour that I was leisurely walking at. And well, I took a little bit of a tumble. I woke up 10 minutes later feeling a little bit tingly to look down and see that my foot had fallen off. Anyways, now I only use the treadmill to serve myself English muffins because I can't walk. So I was making a delicious quarantine meal of salad and licorice, aka diabetes salad, when something caught my eye outside my kitchen window. I looked across my yard to see my neighbor had left a message for me. I immediately thought, bruh, I'm about to have a Taylor Swift music video love story, but then I remembered that my neighbor is a 72-year-old grandma named Myrtle that smells like moldy peas. I looked closer and saw that her sign just said hello. I thought, okay, she seems pretty friendly. So I grabbed some paper and decided to write a note back. I scribbled down, hi Myrtle, and drew some hearts. I ran upstairs to my window, left it there overnight, hoping that I could have some fun with that elderly bag of bones and skin. Then the next morning, I ran upstairs to see what she'd written back. So anyways, I'm currently hiding in my basement with my dog and my Animal Crossing trying to figure out what to say back. Please help, I'll reply in part two. Remember on Vine when people would get injured and then go viral for no reason? Well, I'm gonna be the first person on TikTok. So that put me in a coma for about 50 years. And the first thing I did when I woke up was check if the TikTok of me getting hit by a car went viral. But I found out the TikTok was no more. It was replaced by Vine 2000. Anyways, I was feeling hungry and super skinny after not eating for five decades. So I checked what was in the fridge. There was some pizza with mold on it, but mold just adds extra flavor. So I ate it. After my mold meal, I decided to wander around the empty wasteland. I was skating around, but then started to feel lonely because humans went extinct from COVID-70. But then I realized this is the future. I'm sure they have time travel. I said, hey Siri, do you have time travel? And she was like, yes, yeah, stupid, it's the future. What day do you want to go to? And I decided to go to a date that would change history. November 13th. I teleported into a Walmart and went to go look for the Gummy Bear album. I looked on every shelf, but I was a year too early. I told Siri, Pass me the rock. Pick my dribble up and Every day I bike past this fenced off neighborhood near me that's radioactive from a nuclear meltdown. But today I decided to explore it, so I went through a gap in the fence and after walking for about 10 minutes, I got to this mysterious door in the middle of nowhere, so I did a little knock and let myself in and closed it behind me to be polite to the radiation. Anyways, I went down the stairs and saw, um, some interesting artifacts that I was not exactly a fan of. And I continued through the bunker and found a very inviting door that made me feel super safe, which led to more stairs that had my knees cracking like Rice Krispies. Anyways, I eventually got to this tunnel and some doors at the end of it that said, Danger, do not enter. But I went in because my middle name is Danger. Just kidding, it's Emil. And after I went through the door, it closed behind me and I tried everything but couldn't open it up because it was locked. So I decided to look around and see what my grave location was gonna look like, thinking maybe it's a movie theater or a game room. And I turned the lights on to see that it was an actual nuclear missile silo where they held the nukes. And it went 100 feet down and now this is where I live, I guess. And my phone is now on 1% uploading this TikTok. So if you see this, that's the last time you're gonna... Today, I door dashed some cooked goldfish from PetSmart because I was really hungry and they were only $3. So I placed the order and walked over to PetSmart to pick it up. But when I got there, I walked in and found the food pickup section and saw all the soon-to-be sushi swimming around in their little tanks that were right next to the not-so-swimming sushi. And that's when I realized maybe pet store food isn't the best move. But I was still super hungry, so I asked an employee if they have anything else to eat. But she told me if I want to act picky, they have rats for sale. So I opened up the rat fridge and... I couldn't do it. So I ended up buying some bugs for like $2, which was such a great and amazing deal. And when I got home, I was so hungry that I ripped open the bag of bugs and just told myself that this little grasshopper in my chopsticks is a Cheeto. So I popped it in my mouth and I felt movement. And I spat it out and it jumped out of the bowl. And I panicked and ran to the toilet. For the next three hours, I vomited up my insides. 
Today I was on a romantic date with my non-existent girlfriend at the park. When I saw someone had left a perfectly good laptop on the ground. So I walked over and picked it up and I tried pressing some keys and turning it on, but it was dead. So I brought the laptop home so I could give it some juice. And that's when the screen turned on and there was this game called Isles of Glory. And I was like, okay, how do I play? And then I asked for my location and I thought, ah, all right. But just that very second, my doorbell rang. And when I checked the door, I got this box from No Frills. And when I opened it, it was full of bananas and wires. And I was like, wait a minute, is this how I play the game? So I went over to my computer and I stabbed the wires into the bananas and then put the wired bananas into my computer. And I can't even make this up. It literally worked with the electrical signals of my hand. And for the next 48 hours, I was playing this game nonstop, squeezing these bananas. Because it turns out you can win up to 10 million PC optimum points to redeem for all sorts of things. And I got so excited that at one point I squeezed the banana too hard. And anyways, I squirted banana all over my computer, but you can go play yourself and win points, but only for a limited time. Since it's now 2021, that means that the Global Panda Express is officially over. Oh, wait, I was just kidding. I meant the Global Pandemic is officially over. Now you might be thinking, how is that possible? Well, two weeks ago, I cured coronavirus by filling a bottle rocket with hand sanitizer, and I sent it into the atmosphere. And for the past two weeks, the hand sanitizer has been spraying into the air, and people all around the world have been breathing in my vaccine air. Now, to test my theory, I decided today to see if I can find any pesky COVID germs lying around. So, I went to the gas station and I licked the debit keypad and then I licked my fingers after typing in my pin which is one two three four and then after that I went to Panda Express and I enjoyed some yummy shrimp but when I was driving home I felt the COVID-21 germs from licking the gas station keypad bubbling in my stomach and I went home and I fell to my bed and I started coughing when all of a sudden I coughed up a piece of Lego but I kept coughing and eventually I had enough Lego pieces of a little Lego house so maybe COVID-21 isn't that bad so my horse's names are Beanie, Marcella, Poofy, Toofy, Fluffy, Muffy, <laughs> Hey, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt you. I was just wondering what the Wi-Fi password is. Oh, we don't need that here. We have plenty of horses. <laughs> yeah, um, see, I was just, I was just gonna quickly check. Uh, I was just gonna check if my friend's uh, coronavirus test came back positive. So if I could just get the Wi-Fi. Shut your damn mouth right now. Mommy says the internet turns your brain to mice. I'm sorry, I was just gonna use my uh, my data, but I just tried calling 911 and it says there's no service, so. Uh, <laughs> Am I allowed to leave? Can, can I go? Can oh, I of course you are, silly. I was just joking. If you want to leave, the bus comes soon. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm gonna- Oh, or you can always take one of the horses. <laughs> So I'm scrolling through Twitter and I see that Justin Bieber was diagnosed with Lyme disease. Immediately, I roll up my sleeve and ask the tick that's been sucking my blood for the past five days that I picked up in Zimbabwe if he's gonna give me Lyme disease. Are you gonna give me Lyme disease? No, bro, you're good. I'm clean. Feeling relieved, I go back to bed. Wait, I do have lemon disease, though. Lemon disease? What? <laughs> Myrtle, why are you walking so slow, man? You're 80. The Grim Reaper's right there. He's gonna get you. He's gonna get you. I bet your bones would just go snap, crackle, pop if I just hit the gas right now. You're finally done! Who would have thought? Not me. Myrtle, your husband has fallen and cannot get up. Some of y'all be taking your pictures like cheese, eh, but when that tongue comes out, it be looking like cheese! If you open your mouth and it looks like you have a mozzarella cheese fondue in there, well then you can call me lactose intolerant because I will not tolerate that. You better go grab your little tongue scrub brush and head over to that tongue Remy from Ratatouille. I woke up this morning after having a nightmare where zombie Shawn Mendes and zombie Camila Kabubu were trying to eat me. I woke up terrified and reached for my water bottle full of Red Bull, but when I looked in my hand, there was like some spot that I'd never seen before. I quickly searched to see what it was and it said that it was cancer, but like, I'm a Virgo, so that made no sense. Anyways, I was still a little bit spooked, so I sent a picture of it to my doctor, and then I carried on with my day, which was watching three seasons of one show and then playing 47 games of Fortnite until 6 a.m. But the next morning, I woke up and it was like itchy and bubbling, and I was like, okay, this is a demon. And just then, I got a text from my doctor and he was like, did you mean to send me a Roblox meme? And I was like, uh, oopsie. <laughs> so I sent him the actual picture and went back to bed. But when I woke woke up, there was like 30 more, and I was like, ah, and I started crying, and they were on my face too, and my doctor texted me that they were a flesh-eating insect, and I cried some more, until one fell in my mouth, and it had a little crunch, and honestly, it kind of tasted like bacon, so like, I ate a few more, and next thing you know, I'm spooning these bugs in my mouth like it's Lucky Charm cereal. 
So I was busy trying to carbonate milk with my mom's soda stream and make milk soda when my friend who lives in a different city texts me, come here now. I get really scared when people send a text and end it with a period. So naturally I ignored the text and laid in bed and stressed about it until 30 minutes later when they texted me again. I checked the text and it said, it's an emergency. And I was like, uh, emergency? It's emergency, just like call 911 or something. But then I thought, uh, maybe they're like hamster died or something. So I got up, got all the way in my car, turned on some Harry Styles, but then after 20 minutes of driving, I had to pull over because I was crying too hard. <laughs> to feel better, I switched on Crazy Frog. What's going on on Sometimes when I listen to a really good song in the car, I kind of lose track of how fast I'm going. So while I was in the middle of vibing, um, I saw flashing lights behind me. But then I remembered getting arrested is a choice, and today I choose not to be arrested. <laughs> so it turns out that's actually not my choice, but I can get these really cool mugshot pictures out of it. You should totally go check them out on my Instagram. It's at Ben of the Week. And comment Crazy Frog if you came from this TikTok. Okay, love you, bye. So I had just finished dropping my uncle off the local prison so he could turn himself in for burning down nine different Taco Bells. Anyways, I was driving home and I checked my mirror and caught a reflection in me and I remembered how much I don't like myself and I literally feel like I look like Donkey from Shrek and no one will ever truly love me because no one So it actually turns out that I was parked on a portal to hell that day. Anyways, I'm trying to get my car towed back from hell to earth. Wait a minute. How come I went to hell? I've only ever slapped like three babies. Okay, maybe four. Anyways, I had been on a journey. I was hungry like you would not believe. And I was really craving some Taco Bell until I remembered my uncle burned them all down. Someone thousands of years ago looked at this cute little animal and thought, Ooga booga, we will cook and eat it. But then they saw this little one and they're like, guys, we can't cook and eat this one. This one, we're going to name Oreo and put a little bow tie on it. But then they saw this one and they thought, double combo. We're going to cook and eat this one. And then we're also going to play with a little dangly thing that hangs by its butthole until it shoots out white liquid. And then we're going to drink it and not ask any questions. And then they saw this one. I decided to eat this too despite it looking like a demon! So it's 4 a.m. and I'm up thinking, do dogs go to heaven? Like the only dogs that know what happens when they die are all dead. And the ones that come back and get doggy CPR can't speak English to tell us where they went. Like I need to know if they're okay. That's why I'm teaching my dog English. That way if she ever sees chocolate in the backyard and eats it, and then freaking dies and I have to give her mouth to mouth CPR to bring her back to life, then she can tell me where she went and I'll tell the CIA where all dogs go after they die. And we'll use top secret technology to open up a portal to their dimension. And I myself will travel there and free all the animals. Oh my gosh, I'm in freaking animal heaven. Look, over there, it's Harambe. Come on, buddy. Oh my gosh, and over there's Grumpy Cat. I forgot you died. That's so sad. Come on. Wait a second. Is that a squid? I hate squids. Just as I was closing the portal to animal heaven, I made sure every last squid was left in there. Then I connected to heaven's Bluetooth speaker and played Dance Monkey on repeat for the rest of eternity at full volume. <laughs> Every morning, I check the comments on my TikToks, and people always ask if I'm crazy or on the devil's salad. Because apparently I act a little bit crazy in my videos. <laughs> so, I thought I'd take you on a tour into my mind and how I make my TikToks. When I wake up, I eat expired rotten garbage from my neighbor's trash bin, and after a few hours, I start seeing and hearing things. And that's when I get to work. I take my iPad and go down into my basement where there's no light and sounds, and I start writing down a fun little story. And then I record the voiceover. I was applying a ton of lotion on my hands because they were as dry as my cat's ashes, and I also wanted my hands to be soft. But then I get frustrated for stuttering so much that I punish myself by watching a full Gabby Hanna podcast episode. Gabby. Then I go film it and send it off to my editor named Georgie, who I pay $5,000 per TikTok to edit them. Just kidding, the editor's me. Georgie's gone. <laughs> I ate him. Oh. Okay, surprise, surprise, this made no sense. But I did make an actual video showing the entire process of how I make my TikTok. So if you want to watch that, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I was standing in the burnt rubble where my house used to be because two weeks ago I blew up my little TikTok candle, but I didn't blow it up hard enough. And it was right next to a roll of paper towel. And I went into the bathroom, but I had a gut feeling it wasn't out. So I went back in and sure enough, I had to blow it out again. After that, I made a struggle meal out of the nasty cereal from the Lucky Charms and some Tic Tacs to really channel the flavor of my white heritage. And I took the pan off the burner, which was very close to a box of matches. And I was pouring it in a bowl as I was about to eat it when I realized I left the burner on. So I quickly ran over to the stove to turn it off and I went back to my food but i can't eat unless i'm watching something so i turn on shira but like my freaking laptop is about to die so i plug it into my extension cable that also has every other thing that i was plugged into it and i realized that's probably not safe so i just plugged it into the wall and while i was watching my show i got distracted so i posted on my story that astrology isn't real because i felt like starting drama and instantly i had 37 curses placed on me all the plates in my kitchen started floating and then i went outside and my house got smited by lightning so uh if anyone has a really nice and comfy cardboard box that i can sleep in let me know <laughs> my friend's dog looked like a dust bunny 
funny. So we took him to the groomers and got him shaved. And now he looks like a little puffy cloud and he's so cute, even though he kind of looks like a human in a dog suit, like that one meme of that dog. Anyways, when we got home, we were cuddling, but then I noticed that he was digging for something in the beanbag chair. And I was like so confused. Like, was he trying to make bread? But then I noticed there was smoke coming from the beanbag chair seams. At first, I thought I tipped over one of the hundreds of unattended candles I have lit at all times. But the chair like wasn't warm or anything. So I unzipped it more and I was engulfed in a cloud of smoke and I blacked out. When I woke up, it was like I had gone through a portal and I was in some alternate reality where terrible world events such as Dance Monkey was never released. And the bat with COVID-19 ran into a glass window. I was loving this new world until I walked into my Minecraft themed bedroom and realized in this universe, Minecraft doesn't exist. I fell to my knees and screamed until I woke up next to the beanbag and I looked inside to realize that the smoke was actually just fungal spores from a moldy chicken nugget. So I had just finished filling out all my private information and passwords to claim my free MacBook Pro that I won from this one email I got until I heard a knock at my door. I was feeling a little bit scared because it was 3 a.m., but I remembered I gave them my social security number, so that means they are gonna keep me safe. I was gonna go turn my computer off and head upstairs to check the door, but it said that a virus was shutting it down for me. Now, I don't want the coronavirus, but if it's gonna start doing things for me, well then, homegirl can like, get it. I crept upstairs so I wouldn't wake up my dog, and I opened up the door, but like, there was no one there. Then I heard a weird sound Sound come from downstairs and saw that my computer was on. I'm like, I thought Miss Corona turned it off. There was a message on the screen from a hacker saying, I'm watching you. I started screaming because I don't know how to process conflict any other way. But then I was surprised to see a message that said, your outfit's cute. Listen, I'm so starved for human attraction that we fell in love. I'm Ben and you're watching Hack Into My Heart, the new reality TV show on TLC. Hello, I spent a week in Japan only eating out of vending machines and I ate stuff like fish in a bottle. Uh, let's try it. You are technically only supposed to drink the soup around it, but I wanted to free Little Nemo. But you have to break the bottle open and the soup was all right. But I was more invested in sending Little Buddy back to his home. Just kidding, he clogged my toilet and I can't poop. Next, I went to a bread vending machine where you could get this bread in a can. This is great if you've ever had the intrusive thought to eat the insulation out of your walls. Next was a banana vending machine, which is just bananas. <laughs> oh, fuck. Next, I got this vitamin C drink, which tasted good, but turned my pee green. And the cap got stuck to my finger and I had to pry it off before it turned Purple, but then I found an edible bug vending machine. So I bought a pack for $14 even though they live in my bed for free and surprise surprise they were nasty. But as I ate them this man walked in on me eating bugs outside his restaurant. Um, I, and I am too scared to ever go back to Japan. I can only fall asleep to loud noises, so tonight I played some mukbang videos on full volume. And I also tried blasting that one girl who goes ah! in all of her songs, and I was about to go to sleep like a baby when I heard a banging at my door, and I realized it was probably my insane neighbor who was literally named Karen. But when I got up and put clothes on and walked down to the door, there was nothing but an envelope that said, use these. So I brought it inside and opened it up, and she had sent me her nasty, crusty, earwax-covered AirPods that smelled like Fritos. And at first I was like, this is a human rights violation, and I'm probably diseased now until I saw the opportunity to suit up in a hazmat suit and rinse the brain caca off of them so that they look new, and then I could sell them to someone in my neighborhood for a profit. So I made a listing for like $150, and this one dude said he would buy it if I could meet him by the nuclear waste runoff. So I Ubered over there, and when I got there, I saw a bunch of money just sitting under some leaves, and I was like, that's not the safest way to do a transaction, but regardless, I just sprinkled the AirPods by it and then went home with 150 in like four different currencies. But it's okay, because I just ordered a bass-boosted speaker with the money from the AirPods. And when it comes I'm gonna have a big old party and blast music with a speaker courtesy of Karen. I wanted to go to Chili's today, but it was burning down. So instead, I went to go get sushi. But it was one of those places where it comes on a conveyor belt and you can take what you want, except for this piece of shrimp that refused to cooperate and wouldn't really. But it's okay, because they also have a screen you can order from. So I ordered myself some crispy rice and it zoomed by faster than I could say, no, officer, I had nothing to do with the Chili's burning down. Anyways, then I saw these nasty cubes that look like Minecraft gravel and I lost my appetite. So I put all the plates down the chute since I was done with them when I wondered what's actually in there. And it said, please don't insert hands or objects. But what did I do? Hit record on my phone and insert it into the slot, which was really smart because then I dropped it down into the chute and had to call over a waiter in shame and he told me that non-play items go out the garbage chute around back. So I went down this creepy corridor and finally found it and when I grabbed my phone and sat down to check what footage I had recorded, uh, I saw... Today, 
I made a DIY North Korean driver's license by taking a picture with my iPad, and then I googled North Korean IDs and slapped my face on it. And I made it look all pretty by crossing this guy's name off and giving myself a fake name. But I didn't do this so I can get into a club or anything. I did it so that every day I can print a new one and change my birthday to today's date so I can get free stuff every single day like a Starbucks drink or make people be nice to me. Anyways, I first tested my ID at Olive Garden and the waiter got the whole restaurant singing happy birthday to me. But more importantly, I got a big old cannoli for free, baby. Anyways, next I went to Cheesecake Factory and I showed my waitress my ID thinking she would give me, I don't know, a cheesecake slice at Cheesecake Factory. But when she came to the table, she had all these cheesecake slices and what did she give me? A bowl of berries. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. But then she dropped the bill off and charged me $8 for the strawberries. When all I wanted was a slice of cheesecake for free because they're like $10. So basically fake uh, North Korean IDs don't work at Cheesecake Factory. Today I was flying over North Korea and trying to sleep even though there was a baby screaming behind me because it shat itself. But what really kept me awake was a song started playing that plays in like all those plane crash TikToks. And then the plane started shaking and the seatbelt sign turned off. And the plane was shaking so much that it spilled water all over my no-no square. And I thought if this plane is going down, I'm not about to be found dead looking like I peed myself. So I snuck into the bathroom even though it said seatbelts on. And I grabbed some paper towel and tried to dry it off. But it was shaking so much that I just went back to my seat. And that's when I realized the music was coming from the stupid baby behind me's iPad. Because it knocked its AirPods pods off from sharding so aggressively. So I tried to lean between the seats to turn it off, but I couldn't reach it, so I called over the flight attendant and asked if we could just throw the child out of the airlock, but she didn't speak English, and just gave me almonds. So I peacefully lost my mind for seven hours, and when I landed, I saw the most nasty little sharder, and chased after it, because it left its iPad behind, but when I touched it, there was literal baby food on it, and I dropped it and cracked the screen. And then I picked it up again to check if it was working, and saw the lock screen, and it jump scared me, and I dropped it again. Whoops! <laughs> Today I woke up on Mr. Beast's 35 foot tall inflatable minion that I tried blowing up the night before with my lung, but my asthma kicked in and I passed out. But anyways, last week he was like, Hey Ben, can you make me the world's largest minion? But I hung up on him, because he's not despicable enough, he's like the opposite, he's like philanthropical. But he called back and I was like, he really is despicable, and I agreed to do it, and ever since then I have been making sure this minion is perfect. So I got the whole factory to line up and take turns blowing it up so I wouldn't be the only one passing out, and I tried to fashion together a giant suit to fit him, but I ran out of fabric and... But finally he was ready. The only problem was when I opened my trunk and tried to fit his body in it, which usually it can fit a few of those, he didn't fit. So I had to ship him in a truck, but I wanted to be along for the journey, so I snuck in while the back door was open and rode in that boy across America until we finally stopped and I opened the door and... Hey. Hey. Uh, I, I got your minion. Uh, just put it over there. Uh... Okay. Come on, so I was making my delicious quarantine meal of tortilla chip cereal, but as soon as I took a bite, I dropped a piece on the ground and my freaking dog ate it. And I thought to myself, isn't it weird how us humans just live with animals? Like somehow a wolf evolved into this cute little rat looking thing, even though she wouldn't survive a day in the wild. But as I was making this TikTok, I was like, wait, where's Kobe? And I caught her in the corner of my eye running directly towards the road. I ran so fast, they canceled the Olympics because they knew I would just win everything. Anyway, she was almost at the street and to my left was a car coming. I thought to myself, am I willing to lay down my life for this little rat? And I was like, nah, I'm not ready to meet Bob Ross and Grumpy Cat in heaven. So I just let the car turn her into a pancake. Of course, I would save her. Are you crazy? I lunged in front of the car and shoved her out of the way. But, um, uh... So it turns out the car was parked the whole time and, like, was not going anywhere. Hey, it's not my fault that I have poor depth perception. <laughs> Today I woke up sad and single for the 7,347th day of my life. As I got up to drink my water bottle full of stale Red Bull, I thought, no, this ends today. Okay, here goes nothing. Dear Zendaya, you don't know me, but I love you. This is my formal marriage proposal to you. April Fool's was yesterday, so I'm dead serious. I would love to marry you on the set of Shake It Up, but the set's actually on top of a boat in the middle of Fiji. And I've invited every Disney Channel icon. Look, there's Bertram from Jesse sitting next to Bob Duncan from Good Luck Charlie. Oh, and there's Mr. Mosby from The Sweet Life. Wait, why is everyone in the audience about? Man. Anyways, I invited Bella Thorne, but she couldn't make it because they stopped her at the airport because she was trying to smuggle drugs. Anyways, I truly believe you were the most beautiful woman on the planet. If I could describe how you make me feel, it's like when you see a hydraulic press video and they squish a piece of soap and it becomes little soap noodles in the air. Now, my net worth is $3 and a half used Subway gift card, so I made my own little soap noodle ring just for you. So, Zendaya, will you be my wife? Guys, please send this to her. If she sees this, I will scream. This morning when I woke up, I reached over to my light to turn it on, and it didn't. At first, I thought the bulb died because it's $4 for from Ikea, but then I looked at my iPad and it didn't charge overnight. And I realized I don't have any power. So I grabbed four blankets and wrapped myself up to conserve heat, even though I accidentally left 
two candles burning overnight. Oops. Uh. I was still cold. So I decided to go upstairs and make myself a hot beverage to stay warm. And I can make coffee, but that's literally bean water. Uh. Or I can make matcha, which is just Shrek's ashes. So I ended up grabbing the matcha because I hate coffee. And I went to grab a cup, but they were all freaking dirty and gross. So I boiled some water in my kettle, which apparently Americans don't have. Like, let me know if you have a tea kettle or if that's just a British thing. Well, anyways. Anyways, I poured some matcha and then the water after it. And then I went to grab the cup and I burned my hand on the glass, which was really fun. And I didn't have any cream because the fridge was warm from the electricity being out. So I took my blankets off and I gave it a test. And mama, let me tell you, it tasted like if dirt had a butthole. I ended up spitting it out. And then I poured the rest out on the concrete. But the water had rehydrated Shrek's ashes and he came back to life. And I, I was getting my teeth fixed today because last week I tried one of those bang energy drinks that all those TikTokers promote. And it tasted like urine and it made my teeth fall out. Anyways, as I was sitting there, I accidentally popped out the ushy gushy thing that was sitting at the back of my throat. And it fell on the floor. So I picked it up off the ground and popped it back in without wiping it off or anything. But then when I got home, I felt something sharp in my mouth and noticed I had a fingernail glued to my tooth. And I flipped my shit. I was so grossed out and I tried ripping it off, but it was stuck on. And then I tried using a fork to scrape it off, but that didn't work. And then I tried playing dentist and all I did was knock out another tooth. And then I realized I need something powerful to get it off. So I walked over to the local power plant near me to try and zap it off. And I climbed up a power line and bit down on it when zap! I woke up and I checked my lip and the fingernail was gone. And I was so happy, so I grabbed my phone and boom! A lightning bolt shocked me. And that's when I realized the power line had given me powers. And I was Mr. Electrodad. <laughs> Today I was in my car when I saw that the Amish were doing a pop-up shop. So obviously I had to go check it out because I don't believe that they're real. And when I pulled up to Simply Amish, I put my mask on because I don't want to give the entire colony the plague or something. And when I walked in, the employee was on a computer. And I was like, that's strange. You're not even supposed to have electricity. But I was walking around and at first it seemed like a really expensive furniture store. And I was like, damn, these Amish are going to be balling. But then I came across this door that was half open, which led to this scary basement that had all of these artifacts and and paintings of Jesus, and then randomly a Rick and Morty Chia pet, and some cards that I don't think are Amish appropriate, and then a Queen's Gambit board game, which- oh, Wouldn't that just be chess? Anyways, I felt the need to buy something so the Amish don't steal my organs. I got one of those popping toys where you put it on the ground and- Anyways, when I paid and got the bag, I noticed they slipped a key in it with a note saying, Need escape? And then some coordinates, which I looked up online and found out they lead to their colony. So I think they tried recruiting me and let me know if I should drive up there and join them. Today, I went to go see Billie Eilish at Coachella, but before she came on, there was this dude wearing a big sparkly onesie who opened for her that kept staring at me, and I was thinking to myself, what's up? Do you have a staring problem, buddy? But anyways, he did a little dancey dance thing, and Shrek was in the audience and seemed to love it. But his cameraman kept getting in the way and then turned to me, and the next thing I knew, rewind that. He put me on the big screen, and I freaked out and went behind the cameraman and started unplugging random cables from his camera, and it turned off the video on the screen. But anyways, then Billie Eilish came on, and kept invading my personal space and staring at me and i was like do celebrities never get taught that staring is rude why are you yelling at me but then she did her little dancey dance and left the stage and i took a golf cart home from coachella and when i woke up the next morning i checked my phone to see a dm from billy herself asking if i was at her show with a winky face and i replied no silly billy here's a restraining order leave me alone and i went back to bed this little thing right here is called a window popper what it's meant to do is pop a window if you're ever trapped in a car so you can get out. But I found that it works on any type of glass. So after I tried it on a picture frame and saw that that worked, I thought, what happens if I try and use this on my front entrance window? I woke up today and decided to go to Claire's to get my ear pierced because I saw they're doing it free if you give them your organs. So I walked in and I picked my piercing and then signed away the rights to my kidneys. And then they marked the ear that I wanted pierced and then boom, they legally stabbed me. But anyways, I went home and I was so excited to take off my mask and see it and they had pierced the mask string into my ear hole. And I started freaking out, of course, and needed to get it off. So I tried finding pliers or something, but I grabbed scissors and used them to cut the mask off so it doesn't rip my ear off. And then I looked in the mirror and I thought, maybe it looks cool, but but it didn't. So I grabbed my computer to try and find the Claire's customer service line so I can sue them. But they closed at 6 p.m. and it was 6.30. So I went to bed and cried myself to sleep. And when I woke up, oh, it was infected. So now I think my ear is gonna fall off in two to five business days. So please let me know what music I should listen to before I have one ear left. 
Today I went to go get the Moderna vaccine, and it hurt a little bit when they gave it to me, but afterwards I went home and I took the band-aid off, but as I was peeling it off, I noticed something hard was underneath, and when I pulled it out and looked at it, I saw a microchip? I've been microchipped! I thought that was fake! But I had to get to the bottom of this, so I grabbed a microchip adapter and put it in my phone, and a folder came up saying, We see you. And in it was a picture that said, meet Candace at 42 Wallaby Way at 2 p.m. And I was really scared, but the next day I went to the address on my bike, and it ended up taking me to this huge building, and I found my way in. But as I was looking around, there was no one there, so I shouted, Candace, who's Candace? And all of a sudden, the lights went out, and I felt something grab me. Next thing I knew, I woke up in a chair tied up. I was so confused, and I shouted, who is Candace? What is Candace? Then, out of the darkness, he appeared, and he said, <laughs> Candace did. So today was April Fools and I got a doorbell notification which I thought was strange because I'm not expecting any packages And when I checked it, I saw a box sitting outside my house. And I was like, what the heck is a baguette? That sounds like the opposite of a you know what I'm talking about Anyways, I picked it up and brought it inside and realized it makes vegetable pasta and I was so excited So I opened it up, but there was no baguette. There was just my hair. And I started panicking because I was like, how did they get my human hair? And that's when I realized that a month ago I cut my own hair and put it online as a real Michael Jackson wig and sold it to someone for $5,000. But they probably got my address from the return address on the package. Anyways, I looked in the hair and found a note saying I need to lock my door because... Ma'am, I'm so sorry, but your son, he's lactose intolerant. No! No! Ma'am, we live in the Milky Way galaxy! He'll die here! <laughs> Mom, don't let them take me! We have to deal with this immediately. I'm so sorry. Initiating uh, launch sequence. Four. So I keep seeing new TikTok houses popping up, and I realized, wait a minute, I live in a house, and I have TikTok. I could make a TikTok house. First things first, I needed to name the house, so I thought I'll close my eyes, spin in a circle, and the first thing I see when I open them, I'll name it. Okay, so I passed out because I got too dizzy, but when my eyes opened, I saw a piece of chocolate. I thought, oh, the Coco House, that's cute. But as my eyes focused, I realized it was actually my dog's doo-doo. But then I had the idea, the doo-doo house. I started cleaning up so it didn't look like I was filming TikToks in a dumpster. I shoveled the sidewalk so that no one slips and breaks their neck while throwing it back to Savage. Then I checked to see if there were towels so that all the stinky TikTokers can shower. But then I remembered I ran out of toilet paper weeks ago and I've been using... Anyways, finally, it was time to recruit people. I DM'd over 50 celebrities, TikTokers, YouTubers. I even told the girl who sings Dance Monkey that she's banned from the doo-doo house and... She literally replied! <laughs> I waited 24 hours to see who would reply and if you want to see everyone that's now a part of the doo-doo house, the link is in my bio. Ever since Trump got banned off of every social media platform, I actually discovered the last way that he's been able to whine to his little Trump stands since he can't be on Twitter anymore. And you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, last January, my number got leaked online and someone took my number and gave it to the Trump campaign. So they've been sending me nonstop texts, emails, and calling me like once a week. Oh, support Donald Trump. And whenever they call me, I, um... <laughs> Politely decline. Anyway, since he's been banned, it's been real quiet. Until one day, I was drinking Red Bull out of my frog mug on the balcony when a piece of paper hit me in the head from the sky and I saw a carrier pigeon flying away. Anyways, I looked at the note and it was a note from Trump himself saying he's bored and losing his job and needs $50. <laughs> so you know what I did? I went looking for the perfect pigeon to send back to the President of the United States and I found a strong young pigeon with just a dash of rabies. I showed it a picture of Trump, pointed it in the direction of the White House, and I said, fly, baby, fly. I'm a Canadian and this is my Canadian passport and this is my Canadian passport picture uh, and for some reason I'm in the freaking United States during the season finale of America because I'm stupid and I just really wanted some good American fast food anyways I was trying to escape before it becomes the newest purge movie so I packed up my Jojo Siwa poster and my Rainy Rodriguez shrine and my favorite toilet seat and I left my room for the very last time and walked over to the bus station to go back to Canada and as I was sitting on that bus I remembered I forgot my passport on my desk while filming this TikTok so I freaked out and I got off the bus and I ran back to my place faster than Zoe Laverne is running from the federal authorities. And once I grabbed it, I then called an Uber back to Canada and it was $4,000, but I booked it since I missed the bus. Anyways, the Uber arrived, so I went downstairs and I got in and the guy was chill until he turned to me and said, is it just you? And I said, why? And he said, I ain't never seen two pretty best no! friends. 
Two weeks ago, I saw a $35 inflatable frog costume. And I bought it, because I'm sick of wearing a mask, and a frog costume covers everything. I was waiting for it to arrive today while seeing if banana peels would stick to my ceiling. When the doorbell rang, I ran downstairs and saw that the suit finally came. First, I got my head stuck. But then I managed to get it on, and I was so happy, but I couldn't reach behind me. So I asked my friend to zip me up, and... Oh my gosh, you're too fat for it. Anyways, I finally had it on at least, so I was excited to hit the streets. I was walking around in the suit, talking to some friendly citizens, and dancing whenever I crossed the street. When I saw people lined up for something what's this lineup for is this for ice cream? ice cream but the ice cream place didn't have any samples so i kept freaking walking then i stared in the window of some shops trying to make eye contact with people until they got freaked out and then i dropped some frog puns what do frogs drink Coca cola but that's when i made a grave yeah. mistake i was busting down a Nicki minaj and throwing it back on a tesla that was parked when there's a person sitting in it <laughs> if you want to see what happened to me, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. So I dropped out of school to become a TikToker, but that won't stop me from joining random Zoom classes and destroying them. First, I hacked a math teacher's study session. She was not happy to see me. Show me yourself or you're out. We have infiltrated your computer. You must press Alt get F out. for- Get out. You'll get out. This is my okay, Zoom now. I'm stopping the Zoom. I'm stopping you. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I decided I would impersonate a Zoom tech support agent and get a teacher to end their Zoom class. Hi there, Mr. Bankston. Uh, I'm with uh, Zoom technical support, and we've been getting some DDoS attacks on certain uh, streams. And they've got like your your Minecraft password, your Roblox password. Uh, so uh, we might need uh, this uh, this meeting to restart. I don't actually have Minecraft or any of that. They're currently on uh, Minecraft servers impersonating you, um, from what the IT department has told me. Okay, and you're not going to join it after I restart it? Right? No, absolutely not. So I need everybody to log off. I'm going to end the meeting. <laughs> Dang it, we're out of time. But if you want to see them freak out, the link to the YouTube video is in my bio. I've been quarantined for 18 days now. I know it's only supposed to be 14 days, but I went and got tested a week ago and they never called me back. Did they maybe call me three times to tell me the results and I declined it because I have phone anxiety? Maybe. At least I got a free mask. Anywho, I'm sitting here after waking up at 8 p.m. because my sleep schedule is worse than the song Dance Monkey, and I thought to myself, if I woke up one morning and didn't feel too good, and then all of a sudden I just pass away like that, like bada bing, bada boom, gone, no one, literally no one, would know. My local Taco Bell might wonder why no one orders five chalupas in one order anymore. Or maybe my dog will eat me and realize she doesn't have an owner and then leave the house to start a new life. And then she's driving to work one day and someone stops her car and says, hey, is that a dog driving that car? And then it hit me that it would likely be months until someone discovered me and I'd probably be covered in wasps and maggots and- Hey, that got really dark. Do you know the plural term for platypus is platypi? They have venomous claws. Anyways, I'm gonna go cry now. Bye. I was enjoying some banana on the cob when I realized lockdown is over here. So I got in the car, hit the gas, and drove to the closest thrift store, and I went thrifting. When I walked in the thrift store, I passed by the toy aisle, and there was a doll on the bottom shelf playing this really creepy song. And I know some dolls are cursed, but it's only $2, and the demon can keep me company, so I bought it. My mask is falling. Anyways, I brought it home, but when I looked at it again, I noticed there was a note attached to the bottom that read, Make a wish or you'll and I thought, <laughs> that's Pennywise's line. This doll's gonna get sued for copying the movie It before it possesses me. But I do be scared of demons, though. So I wished for the first thing that I could think of, which was an air fryer. Then after making my wish, I went to bed. I woke up the next morning to the birds chirping the sunshine and ah! 300 pound air fryer on my chest crushing me to the point where I couldn't breathe. I finally got it off and thought, you know what, Mr. Demon? Thank you for the air fryer. It's not exactly how Amazon would have delivered it, but I like your vision. Then I realized I have another wish left. I was thinking, what do I want more of? <gasps> some fire shoes. So I said, I want some fire. You want fire? <laughs> no, no, no. Hey yo, I pay so little attention to sports that this year I had to Google what sport the Super Bowl was for and I've never been very competitive as a child so my parents had to force me against my will to join sports teams as a kid and the thought of sitting down for three hours and watching a football game makes me want to throw up, check! Today was my first day working at Starbucks and I was making a garbage water frappuccino until I realized this isn't a Starbucks, everything is fake! I'm in a fake Starbucks in Ikea! I ran as fast as I could to escape the fake Starbucks and when I finally got out I realized I still don't have a job. How am I gonna get enough money to buy a Shrek cardboard cut? Out. So I made a resume even though I have zero qualifications. I got in my car and drove to the haircut store But they wouldn't hire me because they saw me give myself a bad quarantine haircut So then I drove over to the grocery store and then I was looking for the manager until some dude coughed in my face I wiped the diseases off my face and then ran to my car to apply hand sanitizer But I didn't realize I had a cut on my finger It burned so bad that I passed out But I was still driving my car and it rolled off by itself when I woke up I had no clue where I was and my car was out of gas I got out and realized I was in the middle of nowhere But then I remembered I can just check my GPS and ah, how did I end up up in North Korea. <laughs> well, that about does it for the checkup. How's soccer practice? How is your mother doing? How how's life been? Oh, it looks like you might be developing some gingivitis right there. <laughs> gingivitis? 
My hair is brown. Oh. Do your knees pop? Try Doo Pro and live a better tomorrow today. I mean, okay. Side effects include death, bleeding. Uh, wait, uh, what? <laughs> joint pain, knee popping. I thought the whole point is that my knees don't crack. What? Knee pain, knee discomfort. You may feel the uncontrollable <gasps> urge to go into your fridge and then grab a lemon and get in your car and drive over to Walmart and look for an innocent elderly person and throw the lemon at their head. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Do not drive while on doo doo pro. But it just made me drop. Uh uh. I'm walking home then. I'm walking. Blindness may occur at any time. Some patients forget English and only speak Spanish. Esto es ridículo. Por qué? In 90% of cases, your knees will fall off. However, popping is guaranteed to stop at this stage. Que mierda! Today, I was sick of feeling lazy, so I went on the treadmill, walked three steps, and then got off. But as I was folding it up, my anemia hit, and I couldn't hold the treadmill anymore, and it collapsed on me. When I woke up, my arm was trapped underneath the metal, and I couldn't get out. My dog is too stupid to help me, and I couldn't even call for help because my phone was just out of reach, and I turned Siri off because last time I used her, well... Hey, Siri, call Wendy's. Killing Wendy. No, 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 no! The only thing within reach was a minion figurine and a fork with a grape on it. First I ate the grape because like, mmm, grapes are delicious. But then it hit me what needed to be done. I put the minion in my mouth so that I wouldn't scream. Then I grabbed the plastic fork and I took my arm up. Wait, does that say emergency release latch? As in like, I did I did not have to sever my, my arm. I did not need to cut off my arm. I recently brought my son Nathaniel to the McDonald's play place and I found him drinking pee in the play place. Drinking what? My son, he came out with this lemonade and I was like, Nathaniel, they don't serve lemonade at McDonald's. And he was drinking urine. Did you speak to a manager? Nathaniel, stop drinking the dog's pee right now! <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, okay, don't, don't cry, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, don't cry, it's okay. Stop, 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 stop! Stop it, stop it, If we're talking and uh, you send me one of these emojis, the conversation is now over, okay? I can smell the local coming from you and it smells absolutely disgusting. You might think I'm crazy for cutting people off because they use a certain emoji. Well then call me lovely peaches because I will go crazy! Hey there, what's up? Just wanted to quickly remind you today to drink some water and DO NOT SAY that water tastes disgusting. It's water, you idiot. It doesn't have a taste. There's a reason why your forehead looks like the topographical map of Utah, and that's because you don't drink water. Oh, are you a little baby who needs a little baby bottle of juice? No, you idiot. Drink the freaking earth juice. Hey, little buddy. How was your trip to Mexico? I had fun. We went snorkeling. We went to the beach. Sick little dude. That's always fun. I got very tan. Look, I'm almost as brown as you. Oh, God. Please don't say it. Please don't say it. Have you tried my pods? Wow, amazing. The sound quality is phenomenal. <laughs> feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. If we take some group pictures together and you only post the ones where I look like Danny DeVito got possessed by a demon. Let me tell you one thing, you are toxic! Second of all, that same demon is going to emerge from my body and possess you to delete those pictures right now! There's no reason why you get to look like an insta baddie while I have to look like a sleep paralysis DEMON! Hey pal, this might come as a shock, but- Ow! Ha <laughs> funny, you shocked me with static. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, that's funny. But no, um, I came to tell you that your cat just got hit by a car. <laughs> Hi, 
here are some things from elementary school that you definitely forgot existed. I think these things were called pennies, but they smell like penis because they were never washed. Everyone who did this to their erasers are in jail now. These would always take me at least an hour to do, but the person sitting next to me had it done in a minute flat. These chairs right here were so staticky, they had a longer battery life than an iPhone 10. You have not known pain until you run your finger over with one of these. So I've never skated before, but I'm gonna land this onto this doing whatever that is from up here. Are you ready? I have nothing to do all day. Okay, here we go. I was collecting celebrities' DNA at Coachella from leftover water bottles on the ground and waiting outside their makeup trailers until they left so I could see if they left behind any DNA on cans or bottles. Because I wanted to try cloning them, because my rich uncle cloned his dog three times and now he has four little sparkies because that's legal for some reason. But anyways, I managed to get this can from Post Malone's trailer as well as a bloody tissue. And when I got back from the festival, I carefully swabbed the DNA and preserved it with isoamyl alcohol and then went back to the website that my uncle used. But oh, I remembered it's like a war crime to clone humans. But I thought I could sneak some Post Malone DNA to the test kit and pretend it's a dog to see what happens. And a few weeks later, I got a call from the uh, United Nations Human Rights Department. But last time I fell for something like that, it was when I got an email saying that I was discovered to be the new Prince of India. And all they needed was my, so my social uh, security number. And then it uh, turns out they were scammers and illegally changed my last name to Dover. B ben Dover. Anyways, I have a live feed of the little embryos as they grow. Look at little baby post Malone. Go, 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 go,